Success is nothing more than a few simple disciplines practiced every day. Welcome to a world where discipline is the cornerstone of success. It's not about grand gestures or once-in-a-lifetime opportunities. It's about the small, consistent actions that you take each day. It's about the discipline to do what needs to be done even when you don't feel like it. It's about making a commitment to yourself and sticking to it. Understand that the path to success is not a sprint, but a marathon. It's about showing up day after day and doing the work. It's about setting a goal and taking the small steps necessary to achieve it. This is the power of discipline. It's the force that propels you towards your dreams one step at a time. But discipline is not always easy. It requires dedication, commitment, and the willingness to push through discomfort. It requires a strong why, a reason that drives you forward even in the face of adversity. It's about choosing the hard right over the easy wrong time and time again. And yet, the beauty of discipline is that it's a skill that can be cultivated. It's not something you're born with, but something you develop through practice and perseverance. Like a muscle, it grows stronger with use. So how can you cultivate this essential skill? Start small. Choose one task, one habit, one discipline to focus on. Make it a part of your daily routine, stick to it no matter what. Over time, this small discipline will become a habit, a part of who you are. And as you continue to practice, you'll find that you're not only growing stronger but also moving closer to your goals. Remember, success is not an event, but a process. It's not about reaching a destination, but about the journey you take to get there. It's about the person you become along the way, shaped by the disciplines you practice every day. By practicing simple disciplines every day, you set yourself on the path to success. Formal education will make you a living. Self-education will make you a fortune. It's a powerful statement, isn't it? But what does it mean and why does it matter? Let's break it down. Formal education, the kind you receive in schools and universities, equips you with a set of skills and knowledge that can help you earn a living. It's about acquiring a specific body of knowledge, a degree or a certificate that can land you a job. It's about learning to navigate within the confines of a defined system. But is that enough? Is formal education the be-all and end-all of learning? Certainly not. Enter self-education. This is where learning transcends the boundaries of textbooks and classrooms. It's about feeding your curiosity, about pursuing knowledge for the sheer joy of learning. It's about acquiring skills that might not necessarily be tied to your job, but can enrich your life and potentially open up new avenues of income. When you embark on the journey of self-education, you're not just learning to make a living, you're learning to make a life. You're equipping yourself with the tools to navigate the complex world beyond the confines of formal education. Self-education is about continuous learning, about constantly striving to improve yourself. It's about reading widely, asking questions, seeking answers, and never resting on your laurels. It's the people who understand this, who never stop learning, who often find themselves in possession of a wealth that goes beyond the material. They are the ones who discover new opportunities, who innovate, who create, who lead. They are the ones who turn a living into a fortune. And they do it not just through money, but through the wealth of knowledge, experiences, and personal growth that comes with a commitment to lifelong learning. So remember, while formal education can provide you with a living, it's self-education that holds the key to unlocking your potential wealth. We're not just talking about financial wealth, but the wealth of knowledge, experience, and personal growth. Self-education is a key to unlocking potential wealth. So let's keep learning, let's keep growing, and let's keep unlocking our potential. Don't wish it were easier, wish you were better. This phrase is a call to action, a challenge to each one of us to strive for personal growth and self-improvement. You see, life is filled with obstacles, hurdles, and challenges. These are not roadblocks designed to deter us, but rather stepping stones designed to propel us forward. Imagine for a moment that you're in a boat rowing against the current. If the current were easy, you'd simply drift, making no progress whatsoever. But the very act of rowing against the current, of fighting, of striving, that's what moves you forward. That's what builds your strength, your resilience, your character. Seeking easier paths might seem tempting, a quick fix to dodge the discomfort of struggle, but in reality, it often leads to stagnation. It's like taking the elevator instead of the stairs. Sure, it's quicker, it's easier, but what do you gain? 
The stairs, on the other hand, might take longer, might require more effort, but with every step, you're building strength, endurance, perseverance. In the same vein, when you wish to be better, you're choosing to grow, to evolve, to adapt. You're choosing to take on challenges head on, to learn from them, to use them as a catalyst for your personal growth. And as you grow, as you become better, you'll find that you're not just overcoming challenges, but you're also creating a stronger, more resilient version of yourself. Remember, the process of becoming better is not a destination, but a journey. It's not about being the best, but about being better than you were yesterday. It's about learning, growing, and evolving one day at a time. It's about acknowledging your weaknesses, leveraging your strengths, and constantly striving to improve. So don't shy away from challenges. Embrace them, learn from them, grow with them. And the next time you find yourself wishing for things to be easier, remember this. When you become better, you find that what was once difficult becomes easy. The major value in life is not what you get, but what you become. This phrase encapsulates a profound truth about personal growth and value. You see, life is not a race to accumulate the most trinkets or trophies, nor is it a contest to see who can amass the most wealth. True value and success lie not in what we acquire, but in the person we evolve into over time. Often we are driven by the allure of material possessions, thinking that they are the ultimate measures of success. But consider this, possessions can be lost, money can be spent, and fame can be fleeting. What remains constant is the person we've cultivated ourselves to be, our character, our values, our wisdom. These are the true measures of success, the things that can't be taken away from us. Personal growth is a journey, a process of constant learning and evolving. It's about improving ourselves, expanding our knowledge, honing our skills, and forging our character. Every experience, every challenge, every triumph and failure shapes us, molds us, and helps us grow. And it is this growth, this evolution, that is of real value. The beauty of focusing on personal growth is that it's a never-ending journey. There's always something new to learn, always room to improve, always ways to become a better version of ourselves. It's a journey filled with discovery, with excitement, with the joy of becoming the person we aspire to be. So if you find yourself measuring your worth by the things you own or the money in your bank account, pause and reflect. Ask yourself, who am I becoming? Am I growing as a person? Am I learning, evolving, improving? Remember, the most valuable asset you have is not what you have in your wallet, but what you have in your heart and mind. The wisdom you gain, the character you build, the person you become. These are the real treasures of life and they are worth more than any material possession. So as you journey through life, don't just focus on what you can get, focus on what you can become. Because in the grand scheme of things, the major value in life is not what you get, but what you become. So focus on what you become, not what you get. The more you know, the less you need to say. It's a simple yet profound statement that captures the essence of true knowledge and wisdom. The more we learn and understand, the less we feel the need to speak out and prove our intellect. This is not about silencing our voices, but rather about the power of listening, observing and absorbing. Let's dive deeper into the relationship between knowledge and wisdom. Knowledge is a collection of facts, information and skills acquired through experience or education. It's knowing that a tomato is a fruit, for instance, but wisdom? Wisdom is the ability to apply that knowledge in a practical, sensible way. It's knowing not to put that tomato in a fruit salad. Knowledge is crucial, but it's when we convert that knowledge into wisdom that we truly grow. That's when we become more humble, more open-minded. Suddenly we realize there's so much more to learn, so much more to understand. We begin to listen more and talk less. Not because we have nothing to say, but because we understand the value of hearing others' perspectives, of considering new ideas. This doesn't mean we should stop expressing our thoughts or sharing our knowledge. Quite the opposite. The key is to balance our urge to speak with the willingness to listen. It's about realizing that every conversation, every interaction, is an opportunity to learn something new. And so, we become more observant, more patient. We learn to appreciate the silence that gives space for thoughts to blossom into ideas. We start to understand that the loudest person in the room isn't necessarily the wisest or most knowledgeable. Often it's those who speak less and listen more who have the most to teach us. So, let's strive to be those people. Let's strive to acquire knowledge 
but let's also strive to convert that knowledge into wisdom. Let's listen more, observe more, and talk less, because in the end, true wisdom lies in knowing that you don't know everything. You cannot change your destination overnight, but you can change your direction overnight. This statement sets the stage for our exploration of personal responsibility and change. Think of your life as a ship sailing on the vast ocean. You are the captain of this vessel, and the choices you make determine your course. Now, you can't instantly teleport your ship from one location to another, but what you can do is shift your bearings, adjust your sails, and chart a different course. That's where personal responsibility comes into play. It's about acknowledging that you are the master of your vessel. The circumstances, the seasons, or the wind may not always be in your favor. You may face storms and rough seas, but it's your responsibility to navigate through them. But what does it mean to change your direction? It's about changing your actions, attitudes, and even your beliefs. It's about making a conscious choice to do things differently today than you did yesterday. It's about learning from your mistakes and using those lessons to forge a new path. It's about not being afraid to leave the familiar shores for the promise of undiscovered lands. Changing your direction also means challenging your comfort zones. It's about not settling for the ordinary, but striving for the extraordinary. It's about not just dreaming big, but taking the necessary steps to turn those dreams into reality. Remember, change doesn't have to be massive or overwhelming. Even a slight shift in your direction can lead to a significant change in your destination over time. It's like the butterfly effect. A small flap of a butterfly's wings can cause a typhoon halfway around the world. Similarly, a minor change in your behavior today can lead to massive success in the future. But it all starts with you. You have to take the wheel, you have to choose to change. You have to decide to steer your ship towards success. So don't wait for things to change. Be the change. Change your direction today and you change your destination tomorrow. Don't let your learning lead to knowledge. Let your learning lead to action. This statement may seem a bit paradoxical at first glance. After all, isn't the purpose of learning to gain knowledge? Yes, but the true value of learning lies not in the accumulation of facts and figures, but in the application of that knowledge. Imagine a world-class chef who spends countless hours studying the art of cooking, reading every cookbook, watching every cooking show, and attending every culinary class. Yet he never steps foot in the kitchen. He never chops an onion, never sears a steak, never bakes a cake. He has a wealth of knowledge about cooking, but he never uses it to create a meal. What good is his learning? The same principle applies to any area of life. You can read all the self-help books in the world, attend seminars, and listen to podcasts. But if you don't apply what you've learned, you won't see any change. Knowledge is a tool, and like any tool, its value depends on its use. Learning is not a passive process, it's an active one. It's not enough to simply consume information. You must digest it, understand it, and then most importantly, use it. Apply it to your life, your work, your relationships, experiment with it, fail with it, succeed with it. This is where true growth happens. Learning without action is like a car without fuel. It has the potential to go somewhere, but it remains stationary. It's only when you fuel your learning with action that you begin to move forward. So how do we turn learning into action? Start small. Take one thing you've learned and implement it in your life, then another and another. Over time, these small actions will accumulate and lead to significant changes. Remember, the goal of learning is not to become a library of information. The goal is to become a doer, a creator, a mover, a shaker. It's to use what you've learned to make a positive impact on your life and the lives of those around you. Turn your learning into action and watch your life change. Success is doing ordinary things extraordinarily well. A simple yet profound truth that we often overlook. We tend to think of success as something grand, something that comes from doing extraordinary things. But the truth is, it's often the result of doing ordinary things extraordinarily well. Think about it. In our daily lives, there are numerous tasks we perform without giving them much thought. These ordinary tasks, when done extraordinarily well, can lead to extraordinary results. It's about mastering the basics, the fundamentals. It's about doing the simple things right, consistently. Take, for instance, the story of the greatest athletes. They don't just wake up one day and become the best in their field. They put in hours and hours of practice, mastering the basic skills of their sport. They do the ordinary things extraordinarily well, and that's what sets them apart. So, how can we apply this in our lives? 
Start by identifying the ordinary tasks in your life that, when done well, can lead to extraordinary results. It could be anything from how you manage your time, to how you treat others, to how you approach your work. Once you've identified these tasks, strive for excellence in performing them. Don't settle for mediocrity, pay attention to the details, be consistent. Remember, it's not about doing extraordinary things, but about doing ordinary things extraordinarily well. And as you do this, you'll start to see the results, you'll see improvement, you'll see progress, and ultimately, you'll see success. Because success isn't just about the big wins, it's also about the small victories, the everyday triumphs. It's about doing the ordinary things extraordinarily well. So don't underestimate the power of the ordinary. Don't disregard the significance of the simple. Embrace them, master them, and watch as they lead you to extraordinary success. Master the ordinary and you will achieve the extraordinary. Motivation is what gets you started. Habit is what keeps you going. Let's delve into these two vital components of success, motivation and habits. Think of motivation as the spark that ignites the engine of success. It's that initial drive, that surge of energy that propels you into action. Perhaps you've been inspired by a book, a conversation, or a personal goal. That's motivation at work. It's the why behind your actions, the compelling reason that makes you want to get up and get moving. However, motivation is often fleeting. It can ebb and flow, affected by our moods, our environment, and a myriad of other factors. That's where habits come into play. Habits are the systems and routines that keep the wheels of progress turning, even when motivation might be running low. Imagine you're on a road trip. Motivation is the fuel that gets your car started and propels you onto the highway. But what happens when that fuel runs low? If you've ever been on a long journey, you know that it's not feasible to keep the pedal to the metal the entire time. That's where habits come in. They're the cruise control that keeps your car moving at a steady pace even when you're not actively pressing the gas. Habits, whether they're good or bad, are formed through repetition. The more you repeat a behavior, the more ingrained it becomes, until it's almost automatic. That's why it's so crucial to cultivate positive habits that align with your goals. These habits serve as the building blocks of success. They're the day-to-day -day actions that gradually lead you towards your ultimate goals. So how do you build these beneficial habits? Start small. Focus on one behavior at a time and repeat it consistently. Over time, this behavior will become second nature, a part of your routine. And remember, patience is key. It takes time to break old habits and form new ones. Build beneficial habits and you'll keep moving towards success even when motivation wanes. So let's get started. What's one small habit you could start forming today? Discipline is the bridge between goals and accomplishment. This statement carries with it a profound truth, one that is often overlooked in the pursuit of success. It is discipline, the act of consistency, commitment, and focus that forms the sturdy bridge allowing us to cross the chasm between our dreams and their realization. Let's take a moment to reflect on this. Goals in their essence are the desires we harbor, the aspirations we aim for. They are the peaks of mountains we yearn to climb, the finish lines we strive to reach, but these goals remain distant, elusive, if there is no bridge to cross, no path to tread. And that bridge, that path, is discipline. Discipline is not simply about adhering to a strict regimen or denying oneself pleasures. It's about creating a structure that enables progress, a framework that guides our actions. It's about making the tough decisions that align with our goals, even when the easier choice beckons. It's about saying no to immediate gratification in favor of long-term success, about choosing the steep, difficult path that leads to the mountain peak instead of the flat, easy road that leads nowhere. It's discipline that keeps us moving forward when the journey gets tough, when our motivation wanes, or when doubt begins to creep in. Discipline is the steady hand that keeps the compass pointing towards our destination, regardless of the storms we may encounter. It's the silent force that keeps pushing us to take one more step, make one more effort, even when our goal seems far away. And when we cross that bridge, when we stand at the peak of our mountain or cross our finish line, it's discipline that we have to thank. For it's discipline that carried us when we were too tired to walk, that kept us going when we wanted to quit. It's discipline that turned our dreams into reality, our goals into accomplishments. So remember, cross the bridge of discipline and you'll find your accomplishments on the other side.